So I want to do an update on the story I haven't talked about in a little while, which is the insane right wing coup that was, uh, I guess you could say, initiated by the U.S., uh, the CIA and the State Department, where we coordinated with the military and right wing political leaders in Bolivia to oust their over their incredibly popular uh, socialist president so that we can put in someone put someone in charge who will serve the interests of US corporations and allow them allow us and western countries to get access to Bolivia's lithium reserves which they have the largest lithium reserves on the planet so typical US coup attempt but this one uh it ends with a stunning upset and like you guys have already heard over a week ago they had their first elections since Nicholas since Nicholas Maduro since Evo Morales was uh ousted and his party the socialist party in in Bolivia won in an outright irrefutable victory in this election and it looks like they are not taking that coup attempt to try to oust uh, their leader and their party. Um, they aren't taking that lightly because in short order, they uh, this new government has thrown out the charges against Evo Morales of the charges of terrorism and all the other bullshit shit that they were trying to charge him with. They've thrown them all out and now they're bringing charges against the right-wing coup mongers, the leaders of the coup in Bolivia. So, I'm here for it. You had randos like Janine Añez uh, declaring herself the president of the country, had absolutely no claim to the title. Nowhere in the Constitution was she even in the line of se- line of secession to become president if uh, anything happened to Evo Morales or anyone else. So, she just... Up and declares herself president because she aligned herself with the U.S. and she aligned herself with the right wing military in Bolivia. So they took this whole might makes right policy and they thought that there would be no consequences for that. Well, looks like there is going to be consequences for that. And I'll get into some of the horrific shit that they did during the coup and during the time when Janine Añez was... uh, pretending like she was president of the country. I'll get into that. I'll also get into why I think this is such a a big deal for the left internationally, because this was, this is a stunning rebuke of U.S. imperialism and our brazen attempt, yet another brazen attempt to overthrow a government just so we can, and, and, visit horrific uh, uh, crimes against its people just so we can steal natural resources and and have a a grip on this country for for geopolitical reasons. And it's it's a big deal that the people that the people of Bolivia put an end to that shit swiftly. I don't think I've ever seen a U.S. coup end this fast. So I'll talk about that. I'll also talk about um the role that the U.S. media played in this coup and how everybody is going to now try to act like they uh, had no responsibility for what was clearly a bullshit power grab by the, the far right in Bolivia. But first, you guys know the deal. Um, I need help from the audience to try to make this show sustainable so that I could focus on making content for you guys, making great content for you guys, and I don't have to worry about uh, having to to try to split my attention and try to make money other ways. So if you guys can help out with the show, you can subscribe to my Patreon. The link to that is in the About page of my YouTube channel. Also, if you'd rather uh, just do a one-time contribution, uh, I also have a link to the pay- my PayPal account in the About page of my YouTube channel. And I'm... You guys already know about the partnership I'm doing with this company called Mask Up, where if you 
click the link that is also in the about page of my YouTube channel and go to their website and make a purchase. I get 20% of your purchase. So uh, they sell reusable cloth masks for about $17. It's a, a decent price and everybody has to wear them inside anyway. So if you're looking for a cloth mask, uh, go and buy it from them and I get 20% commission. So now back to this story. I mean, it was really insane to to watch what was happening in Bolivia in real time when they were trying to oust Evo Morales because it was such a, a bullshit, naked and brazen power grab and and clear interference from the U.S. to anybody who follows U.S. foreign policy closely and, and has followed the, the history of U.S. interventions, covert and overt, in country so that we could steal the natural resources. It was the typical playbook. And they they challenged the most recent elections. They said Evo Morales rigged the elections. There were irregularities. And these were the claims that were coming from the OAS, organization, the Organization of American States, which is uh, claims to be this neutral organization that monitors elections but it's almost entirely funded by the U.S. State Department. So it really just acts as an arm of the U.S. State Department and the CIA, calling into question elections for countries um, where we are looking to make some sort of of power play and install a a right-wing government that's favorable to the U.S. and and Western uh, uh, corporate interests. So they tried this after Evo Morales' election. Um, he was, the at the time, the most popular president in Bolivian history, had the, the support of the overwhelming majority of the country. And so it was on its face, the claim was kind of ridiculous. And then the, the minor discrepancy that they were using as justification that, that they, to call into question the entire election was just, a delay in one of the uh, kinds of vote counts that were going on during the election. So it wasn't really a big deal, but they turned it into a big deal. And all Western media ran with the story. They all try to make it seem like Evo Morales was this authoritarian, this communist, socialist, right, I mean, left wing authoritarian, and he was doing a power grab of a country where he was already overwhelmingly popular and already won in landslide elections. And, but just because of this unverified, uncooperated report, the, the US media, Western media did its job as just a mouthpiece of the US government and our allies. And they ran with the story. And then that's what the the right wingers in the country like Janine Agnes and and the the military leaders and the right wing um leaders of of the police they all latched onto that and like oh see look the US everybody in the US is saying it's rigged clearly Evo Morales is a no good dictator and we have to run him out so the military and the police as you guys already know so I don't need to get too much into it uh create mayhem and fucking debauchery in the streets uh, assaulting people, setting buildings on fire, burning down the houses of, of Evo Morales' political allies, arresting them, detaining them, uh, brutalizing politicians who are from Evo Morales' party trying to run them out of the country. And they gave him an ultimatum. It, either you leave or it gets a lot worse and you end up dead and all your, your, your allies end up dead. So Evo Morales left the country. Now, here we go. We have these elections. And what do you know? Evo Morales' Socialist Party wins handily in yet another election. This might be the, what, the third, fourth election in a row that they won overwhelmingly. So completely disproves all of the bullshit about him having to rig the last election. And of course, none of the coup mongers in U.S. media who called him a dictator and said this he was authoritarian and he was he rigged the elections and all that stuff. The same thing they say about Nicolas Maduro, the same thing they say about all left-wing governments that they don't agree with. None of them are ever going to say, ah, shit, hmm, looks like we were dead wrong about that. Looks like 
we aren't the uh, uh, authoritative source on whether or not an election was rigged. Looks like we got it wrong, guys. Don't listen to us on this shit anymore. No. They aren't going to do that. They're At best, they'll do one quick story. Oh, socialist wins big in, Bolo- in Bolivia. But they aren't, they, aren't, they aren't going to do a mea culpa. They aren't going to take responsibility and say, oh, well, looks like our propaganda, our unverified, uncooperated propaganda that we were literally just reading from basically the U.S. State Department and the CIA. Turns out it was all just an elaborate plan to uh, create justification for a coup. And therefore, we will be more careful when we report on such stories, especially from sketchy, unverified sources like the U.S. government and the State Department and the CIA. That's what that's how you would do. That's how you would approach this if you had any level of integrity or any level of responsibility for your actions because it's not an overstatement to say this coup could not have happened with international support had it not been for the mainstream media in the u.s and around the world running with this unverified completely concocted bullshit story that ever morales rigged the elections that he's a dictator and all that stuff they could not have justified supporting Janine Nanez, supporting this right-wing coup, if it wasn't for the initial OAS report. If it wasn't for the initial reporting on that bullshit report. So I don't want this to ever be lost in history, the um, impact that media can have on the direction of a country. That story should never be lost, and I will never stop, uh, 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 forget that, and and the impact that journalism had in in this coup in Bolivia, and and about the charges being brought against Janine Añez and these other right wing coup leaders. I mean, I don't even think it's debatable. The charges that they're being brought up on is is um the purchase. Of, and the use of tear gas because tear gas is uh, uh, chemical weapons, considered chemical weapons internationally. So using them on their own citizens like they were doing relentlessly when people were protesting the coup, that's those are considered war crimes. So yes, they should be charged with that. They should be charged with a lot more. They should be charged with murder because Janine Añez and the, the right-wing military and police they were doing extrajudicial killings on the street. They were doing massacres of protesters on the street who were defending Evo Morales and, and trying to push back against uh, uh, this coup. Peaceful protesters on the streets were gunned down by the military, by the police, and they were sanctioned by the, the fake president, the really, she was acting as a dictator, Janine Añez. So... Yes, definitely charge them. Yes, prosecute them. And whatever happens, happens. And I I think it's a a great thing that they didn't just, the Socialist Party didn't just get into power and be like, oh, we'll let bygones be bygones. You guys did a whole right-wing coup. You coordinated with the U.S. government. You organized the typical Latin American death squads that roamed our country and terrorized our citizens. You tried to steal our natural resources and give it to corporation, Western corporations. But ah, we won the election, so whatever. Let bygones be bygones. No, I'm glad they didn't do that because that's bullshit. And it's... Like, that's something that, that, that I wish would happen more, and I definitely wish would happen here in the United States. Like, after uh, um, when Obama won the election and Bush left the White House, there is absolutely no earthly reason what, that anybody can come up with as to why the, the Bush administration was not prosecuted. They committed the crime of a century during the Iraq war, lied the country into a war, made up bullshit justification after bullshit justification, knowing that none of it was true, 
to justify a military of extremely violent, brutal, lengthy military occupation of a country that never attacked us. This resulted in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of civilians, really what's likely over a million civilians. Like I said, crime of the century, and not to mention the whole, the, all the profiteering and, and Dick Cheney making out like a fucking bandit and all the other people in his administration uh, uh, getting, getting um, having these, these corrupt deals with defense contractors, no bid contracts and with their donors and all this stuff. All of that shit should have been prosecuted and there's no reason, there is no legal reason that anybody can give me as to why that didn't happen. People like to say, oh, here in the United States, we're, that's some banana republic, or oh, we're gonna prosecute our, our opposition, and we don't believe in that here in, in, in the United States at all. But hold on, that is ridiculous because what you're saying is, literally, no matter what these people do, no matter what the opposition party does, no matter how clearly illegal it is, no matter if they're, they're Clearly, war criminals and war profiteers, we're never going to prosecute them because just simply based off the fact that they are in, uh, the, in politics and political leaders in our country. That's, that's basically the, the underlying thought behind that. And that's ridiculous, like I said, because they committed the crime of the century. Are you going to tell me, oh, no, they just get a pass because they're Republicans and we're Democrats and we don't want to. That's nasty optics to make it look like we're prosecuting the opposition. That's ridiculous. There are, of course, times where um, you have a political party in power and they abuse their, par their, their power and lock up political dissidents. Of course, that happens. Many times that happens it's at the behest of the U.S., um, in, in other countries. A um, good example would be just like in Bolivia when they try to bring bullshit charges against Eva Morales. That's an abuse of power and that's clearly you making up charges and using your authority to go after political dissidents, to go after your opponents. That's different than people in power committing crimes and then getting away with it. That's completely different. So the only reason why they didn't do it here in the United States is because the Democrats, the, the quote opposition party, isn't that much of an opposition party. They agreed with the Iraq war. They agreed with the Afghanistan war. They agreed with all the war crimes of the Bush administration. So, and then Obama comes in and continues all of that. So it was really more of a, I'm going to cover my own ass and I don't want anybody coming in and prosecuting me for war crimes. So let's just give everybody a pass for war crimes. That's really the, the main reason why we didn't do that here in the United States. But um, I think it's great that they did looking to press charges in Bolivia. Definitely support that. And overall, I just think this is a, a, a big win for the left internationally and for people, for opponents of imperialism. Because for decades, um, I'm more familiar with what's been what's happened after the Cold War, where we've overthrown dozens of of democratically elected governments and committed war crimes, backed brutal strongmen who did massacres and genocides of their own people, and also we could steal natural resources, and we we put in place these right wing governments to and install them and do these coups. And the devastation that is wrought is something that continues for decades. And eventually, some, at some point, uh, the people fight back hard enough and they, they get control of their country again. But it's usually a very long and bloody road. And it's an uphill battle. And it takes years to try to undo what's been done. Um, some of the countries that I've, I've seen this happen, try to like slowly, somewhat successfully is like in, in Guatemala or in, uh, Chile, where just now, just within a week, the, the last week, they finally undid Pinochet's constitution and, and decided to write it in a way that's favorable to the people of the country that took them decades. So it is a sight for sore eyes that the left actually has uh, 
beat back U.S. imperialism, at least for now, and took and in Bolivia, they took back control of their country within two years. So I think that's great news. And also, uh, this might be petty of me, but who cares? This is what it actually looks. This is what it looks like when the left actually has a win. This is a win. The, the Socialist Party winning in an irrefutable election after they, the, all the, the international fear-mongering and bullshit about how they stole the last election, them winning in an irrefutable election, that's a big win for the left. That's them coming in on a mandate of the people. That's a big win. Them throwing out bullshit charges against Evo Morales, that's a big win. Them bringing charges against right-wing cool leaders, that's a big win. Them inevitably ripping up the contracts for for uh, the, that gave Western companies access to their lithium reserves, that's a big win. And here in the U.S., the left is just so used to fucking losing all the time. Every fucking way you turn, every way you look at it, the left is just losing, losing, losing. That they don't even know what winning looks like. If you ask some people in the U.S., they say, oh, AOC and Bernie Sanders talking about Medicare for all. That's a win for the left. What? Did we get Medicare for all? No. Did they even bring up a vote for Medicare for all? No. So, like, the, a win is a win is a win. That's, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make there. That's my final point. A win is a win is a win. Moving opinion polls a couple percentage... Um, having more people talk about a policy, a specific policy issue or set of policy issues, that's a good thing. That's progress, but that's not a win. And here in the U.S., the left doesn't win for shit. We have no wins. We have, point to me a single win that's on the magnitude of anything that, that I, I, I listed that's happening in Bolivia. You can't. You can't. No policy wins like that. No electoral wins like that. You, I mean, I guess you could pick up a couple... Uh, you could pick up five house seats out of a, 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 a 435 people in the house. Oh, bravo. That's not a win. That's not a win. But what happened in Bolivia is a win for the left. And let's keep that in mind going forward.